You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. Insider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. Be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. That's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike Options Pricing and Analysis Software. Quick Strike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy to use web based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. Quick Strike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at Bantix.com. That's B A N T I X. Dot com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at QuickStrike1. That's Q-U-I-K-S-T-R-I-K-E-1. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by FTSE Russell, a leading global provider of benchmarks, analytics, and data solutions. Investors in the U.S. and around the world are using FTSE Russell indexes to benchmark their investment performance and create investment funds, ETFs, structured products, and index-based derivatives. Many Options Insider Radio Network listeners will be familiar with the Russell 2000 Index. Russell 2000 Futures and Options are currently trading on the Chicago Board Options Exchange and CME group. For more information, please visit ftserussell.com, cboe.com, and cmegroup.com. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody. That music means it's time once again for This Week in Futures Options. I apologize to you for the for the time switch this week, coming at you a day and an hour earlier than usual. I'm sorry, I got roped into 
some uh, some panel duties at a conference this week. And unfortunately, it's pretty much exactly during our usual showtime, so we had to bump it up a little bit. Thankfully, uh, Sean was able to accommodate us here at this new time. He'll be joining us here. And, of course, if you listen on a podcast, you won't notice. It's no difference to you. You're just going to get the show a little bit earlier, which is a nice little bonus for you. Next week, we'll be back at our normal time, I promise. And as I mentioned, joining me at this extra special new bat time on the same bat channel, our old buddy, Mr. Sean Smith, the managing director of derivatives licensing over there at FTSE Russell, joining us from somewhere deep in the uh, environs of New York City. Sean, thanks for joining us on this extra special different time today, sir. Mark, thanks for having me, and uh, welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm in the heart of Times Square, New York City. Oh, so make sure you get a nice pretzel, some of those uh, dipped nuts. As he says that, of course, we just lost him, listeners, so we'll, we'll get him back <laughs> as we get things rolling. You know, the connectivity in New York City, not always the best, listeners, so we'll get him lined back up here. I think he was enjoying his uh, his nuts, maybe, perhaps, and his pretzels a little bit too much. I lost you there. There you are. Yeah, connectivity in New York City I've often found not the best, right? <laughs> and we'll get rolling because I know, I know you got we probably can't rely on this connection for too long. <laughs> so we'll see what we can get. But, Sean, I know you're busy out there spreading the word of all things FTSE Russell. What's going on in your neck of the woods, sir? Yeah. You know, volumes continue to grow. December was a record month for uh, CME volume in uh, Russell 2000 Futures, which is very exciting to see. You know, uh, something I, I'm noticing and something that uh, some of your viewers might want to take a look at is the liquidity in the early morning and in the, uh, in the European hours. And actually in the Asian hours, the, the, the volume is just beginning to pick up. And, you know, I don't know uh, uh, the style of trade that uh, some of your guys follow, but um, sometimes when they want to get their hedges off, the, the, the markets are obviously cash is closed, you know, in the Asian hours, but... Uh, the futures are trading. So sometimes when they're not as deep and liquid during the day, there are some really good trading opportunities. So it might be something to look at during those Asian hours and the early European hours where, you know, it's over, it's over uh, 10% of the 10% of the trading volume in, in CME's Russell futures trades uh, in those early morning hours. So might be something to look at. That is interesting. You know, we were talking about that on the last show, actually. That's kind of the question I, I had for you. How is the message of Russell, how is that getting out beyond these shores? Russell 2000 typically viewed as as a strong domestic product, you know, but maybe outside these shores they have to, some learning curve to do. Sounds like there is decent volume and liquidity in those hours. Exactly. The word is getting out and, you know, the CME sales force is, is global and they're just a tremendous team uh, and they do just a fantastic job getting the word out and, and the true result is volume and open interest, right? So, you know, my hat's off to CME, our partners. Um, they're doing a fabulous job uh, globalizing Russell. Uh, which is truly a global product. So uh, my, hats are, my hat's off to them. Congrats. Yeah, you're right. In terms of records and volume, it was a, a strong December for all things equity options over there in CME, including Russell, of course, equity index volume averaging 5.1 million contracts per day in December. That's up 73%. 73% from December of 2017. Obviously, this December, not like a typical December, listeners. Usually a very quiet time. Volatility goes in. Market's kind of tranquil. This year, not so much. E-mini, NASDAQ, 100 futures and options. ADV were strong. ADV up 121% to 743,000 contracts. As Sean mentioned, the E-mini Russell 2000 futures up 38% to 245,000 contracts and uh, E-mini select S&P select sector index futures and options ADV up 91% uh, to 32,000 contracts of course uh, E-mini S&P option futures and options ADV increasing 68% to 3.6 million contracts in the futures alone up 73% to 2.7 million contracts also some love in the weeklies for the S&P 500 and the Dow with uh, the ADV rising 53% and 143% there, <laughs> respectively, in both of those products. So a strong December. Uh, coming into showtime here, of course, the equities are interested. We're kind of post-Brexit now, so market kind of liking maybe a little bit of that uncertainty going away. We're seeing a bit of a rally. We're seeing volatility coming in a little bit. VIX right now at about 18 and a half. That's about a point and a half lower than where it was uh, not quite a week ago. 
RBX 21 and a half, about two and a quarter points lower than last show. So do that quick math there. You'll see that spread coming in a little bit. It was pushing four points last week, this week down to about three. So slightly tighter than last show. Interestingly enough, it's RBX coming in more aggressively that has actually tightened it. Usually it's the VIX vacillating a little bit more, having maybe a little bit more vol vol lately uh, that usually moves the spread. This week it's RBX coming in more aggressively, which is kind of interesting, seeing small cap ball uh, coming in more aggressively this week. Speaking of aggressive, Sean, interesting data. I was looking at this. You probably saw this as well. We talked about this a while ago on the show, some of the use cases for some of these uh, Russell options out there. One of them, of course, is everybody likes to, quote unquote, harvest the risk premium, right? And that's some people crunch the number. I think this is Wisdom Tree crunch the numbers because they have some ETFs that do this. And they were looking at writing at the money puts in uh, the Russell 2000 versus the index itself. That's, of course, their uh, put right index for Russell, which is P-U-T-R, if you want to track it yourself. It sells in a monthly at the money put listeners in the Russell 2000. And let's see. Let's looking at the data here for this is for, I believe, Q4. This is Q4 data on the Russell 2000. The total number of days when uh, the Russell 2000 closed negative, that was 39 in the quarter. And the days when the put rex, people have this perception, Sean, that, of course, writing at the money put, it's going to blow your doors off. It's going to be completely completely destructive. Uh, And yet the days when uh, when the put right lagged the Russell 2000 by itself was only four. But there was a very volatile period. We saw some market sell-offs in that period, so you might think it would be a lot worse. Uh, days in the Russell 2000 index closed positive were 24 in the quarter, and the days when the put right lagged in that time was 19. Maybe you probably would expect maybe a little bit of that, but not as bad, actually, on the downside. The average Russell 2000 return on down days during the quarter was down 1.3% versus only about down 1% for the put right. And uh, about one and a quarter percent on the upside on the positive days for the 2000 versus the index itself versus almost that about 0.92 percent for the put right on those days. Daily downside protection. They also calculate, I guess, by harvesting that extra little bit of premium coming in at 0.31 percent. So interesting stuff here, Sean. Not that people need more ammunition to go out and quote unquote harvest the risk premium, but an interesting data here that shows that. These types of strategies, when when used in conjunction and used well, can actually be more effective than you think. Absolutely, absolutely. The the you know we talk about uh, put skew and we talk about the RVX versus the VIX. Um, these products that the CBOE calculates are uh, fantastic vehicles, um, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't stop folks from just trading the the puts themselves and putting on these transactions. As I'm, I think most of your audience does. Um, but yeah. Uh, the CBO does a fantastic job here, and they've been a fantastic partner in getting the word out about these products. Well, Sean, I know this was a bit of a time switch for you. I know you got to hop off some other meetings, but really quickly before we go here out of equity, anything you want to leave our listeners with? Any interesting thoughts or nuggets? I know we have some questions for you, too. Maybe do you want to cheat and answer one question before we go? Sure, let's, let's answer a question. Love to. All right, let's see what we got here for you. I know we got some here for Oh, here's a, actually, here's a good one. Perfect for you. This comes from... Uh, and Diaz, and Diaz, maybe D, they want to know, uh, do the same market-making firms trade traditional equity options like Apple, as well as on the S&P, Dow, and Russell E-mini options? So he wants to know, Sean, basically when you're out there talking to liquidity providers, are the same firms out there that might trade you know, uh, options on Apple, everybody loves, are they also the ones making markets in the Russell, or are they different firms? A lot of them are the same firms, and for good reason, right? Them, uh, Apple being such a, a strong component of indexes, um, especially the, our biggest, right? One of the FANG stocks, right? So, um, absolutely, the uh, you know, S&P volatility is d- directly uh, correlated to the largest largest uh, uh, stocks in the index. So, uh, it would be uh, a, a fantastic edge um, or just a... Uh, a trade, but absolutely, market making firms trade components of the index along with the index themselves. The, uh, the options of both is, is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So he's not going out typically to special firms, <laughs> and he's right. If you're trading index volatility, you're going to want one of the major components of that, which is typically Apple in your book as well. Well, thank you for joining us, Mr. Sean. You're now trivia f- for you. Oh, good. I was a market maker. I was in a market ma- I was a market maker on the trading floor trading. Apple when it was singly listed on the American Stock Exchange back in the day. So I'm dating myself there, but I was, uh, I was, I was in that crowd on the Amex on the American Stock Exchange floor years and years ago. Was that back when it was like $7 a share, something around that level? 
John Scully was the CEO. If that <laughs> ring, ring, rings any bells? Oh yes, the, the the good old days when they made the Newton. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the uh, the strong days of Apple. Well, Sean, thank you for joining us. I know for a few minutes, a weird time. We'll get you on the normal time again next week, I promise. Thanks, and I'm, I'm sorry I got to jump, yeah. You're now free to go enjoy the pretzels and uh, all the other fun that's available in Times Square, sir. Have fun. Thanks. Good, good to be on the show. Thanks, Mark. No problem. Take care. All right, listeners, let's keep on rolling. It's an active week. Oh, no, we, we get a lot of queries all the time for different product categories that aren't always lighting it up. We thought we'd, a lot of you looking and asking about uh, FX this week. Go figure. Got a big vote going on out there this week in Brexit territory. Miss May getting a little bit of a setback. They had a no confidence vote today, but we do believe she survived that. So uh, maybe not the, uh, not the end for Miss May, but still a bit of a setback. Uh, over there, like I mentioned, the markets in general, the equity markets at least, tend to like this development. Uncertainty going away, they tend to like that. Let's see what's been going on. A lot of you asking out here in the old pound dollar. Again, we don't talk a lot of FX because it usually isn't the, the sexiest of categories. This week, let's see if that's changing. Coming into showtime, again, we're seeing a net up on the week a little bit. We saw an interesting interesting trading all week. We saw a pound kind of dropped quite a bit on Tuesday as people were kind of prepping for the vote and then by the time the vote came out and all was known we saw it uh, mostly regain those losses and now on the week it's it's kind of unched it's up slightly here pushing almost 129 but 128 and change out there so very close out here yeah the, at the money strike is pretty much 129 here at this point let's see the vol you know you have an event like this you're going to see typically you know vol come off but this week actually Looks like net we've seen vol actually tick up a little bit, which is kind of interesting. Maybe people are saying that they don't think the other shoe has fully dropped yet. And again, we don't really know how the how the Brexit is going to work out now. So maybe that's being reflected here. Pretty much throughout most of the term structure, we're seeing a decent little pop in vol, quarter of a point handle up into the front, you know, contracts. This one's expiring in <laughs> about 20 minutes, so I can't really call that vol, but going out a little bit beyond that, we're seeing a, still a decent boost in vol. And let's look at the skew out here as well. Where has the primary action been out here when we're talking about all the action here in FX? It looks like the primary month with about 28%. Actually, interesting, wasn't in the weeklies things that would you'd think maybe would be lighting it up this week, given all the action out here in all things Brexit. No, it was in, looks like, the March. March contract was leading the dance, and not with a huge amount either. It was about 28% of the paper this week. Overall, a decent week. OI up about 12.6%. So, yeah, the biggest month was March. So I guess we'll look out there and see how the skew has evolved out there. And it seems... Actually, the skew doesn't seem to have changed much here in March, which that doesn't really surprise me. I wouldn't expect March, even though it's a big pay, big trader this week, doesn't wouldn't expect that to change. Well, let's go a little bit earlier and see how some of these weeklies were responding to the event here. Yeah, let's go out about a couple of days left. This is looks like a week three contracts going out, going to be going out soon. And let's see here. The puts were about 1.6% rich to the other money, now about 1.1%. So not a huge change over the week. Uh, the calls are where the big change came in. They were, looks like we had a bit, of a, a bit of a smile out here. Both the calls and the puts were bid, which is kind of interesting. People didn't know what was going to happen, right? It was a bit of a you know, coin flip event. So their calls were also bid to the other money, about 3.1%. Now they're pretty much flat. So the call skew has pretty much been annihilated out here in these near-term weekly. So that's kind of a little bit more in line with what I would think would happen versus March, which still has some time left, and so I wouldn't expect the skew to move a ton out there. But like I said, the big print out here, the big month, were the calls out there in March, the 135 calls. That's, of course, 1.35 out there, listeners, for those of you who don't trade or really aren't that familiar with the strikes out here. Doing about 1,585 contracts. Again, not the most. Uh, actually, I take that back. The biggest trade by a little bit more was actually going out a little bit farther here. This is going out to June. The June 1.19 puts. I love the strikes out here. With about 1,612 was actually number one just ever so slightly 
Uh, so let's go pull let's go pull those bad boys up so we can we can report it all accurately here for you listeners. There we go. So the one point one nine puts doing sixteen hundred, all of that pretty much sixteen hundred and twelve, sixteen hundred and ten of that on Monday, and pretty much all that opening. So opening to the downside here in June, and obviously interesting trade going in ahead of the also worth noting the 1.405 calls looks like a vertical going up as well the 1.345 to the 1.405 i love these strikes Uh, vertical going up 1600 times as well so maybe legging into a bit of a bullish risk reversal or call it a call vertical with the put kicker maybe call it what you will here so it looks like they all went up on monday so actually yeah it looks like again i don't have the executions here in front of me but i'm gonna i'm gonna hazard a guess could be collaring with a call but, but that would probably not usually you see it the other way around you see it as selling the put so let's go let's look at it as selling the 1.19 put and then buying this vertical 1600 times the 1.345 versus the 1.405 uh, vertical 1600 times so that's clearly our big trade of the week and uh, interesting, interesting stuff out here. So perhaps if that did go up that way, it wasn't against some sort of core underlying position, which it could always have been. And then interesting, maybe then, of course, they're looking at a bit of a pop and don't mind picking it up down to that lower strike level. And if it's vice versa, of course, then they're hedging themselves out to the downside. And they've also got a little bit of a covered call going, but they want to get back in if there is indeed a vertical. So I'll have to dig into the blocks maybe and see if I can get a chance to see how, maybe exactly how that went up. But that's our big trade out here in the pound dollar this week. Let's look how really quickly. Uh, overall, we were talking earlier as well about options and just equity options records. It was an overall record year for CME out there, 2018. Full year options ADV up 14% to 3.9 million contracts. That includes record electronic options ADV is up 20% uh, to 2.6 million contracts. You know, CME people still think a lot about CME as a futures exchange, but clearly a lot of options going up and changing hands out there in CME land here. Let's look. December obviously was a robust month for them as well. We already hit the equities. Uh, Let's just electronic options ADV grew 39%. Options volume overall in December 4 million contracts a day, roughly. That's up 32%. Again, strong month from December of last year. Rates, options, ADV up 40%. Uh, equities already did. Uh, let's see, ag options, ADV up 2% to 169,000 contracts. Not quite the boost in ags, maybe. you think the trade war might have driven a little more interest in that, co- in that complex. Metals, options up 28% to 59,000 contracts a day. This is ADV now, listeners. Uh, let's see. Rates, options, ADV, 1.5 million contracts. Energy options, ADV, 376,000 contracts. Open interest at the end of December, 116 million contracts. That's up 7% as well. All right, let's keep rolling. Crude land, crude coming into finishing up yesterday, rallied a bit. Let's see. Let's pull it up. By the way, listeners, of course, you guys can find all this for yourselves here. See me, group.com slash twifo and then choose from the drop down menu there energy and then wti and you will be off to the races just like i am now over there on the quick strike mr nick by the way still enjoying his uh, beginning of the year traveling here <laughs> well he'll be back in the studio back on the show here again pretty soon let's go on here looking at coming into yesterday of course we saw crude rising a bit a little over three percent settling a little bit north with that 52 handle again there was some hopes for some stimulus coming out of China. Remember, Chinese demand, international demand in general, has kind of been weighing on crude of late. So maybe some talk coming out of China, some plans to stabilize their economy was a bullish sign for growing crude demand going forward. So that helped to stabilize things a little bit. That's, of course, coming on the heels of earlier this week on Monday when we saw that weak data on imports and exports coming out of China. That, of course, raising a lot more concerns. China, big demand for a lot of commodities, including crude. And uh, if China is weak, then the demand will be weak going forward. So we saw a nice little bump coming into showtime now. It's pretty much right, hovering right around the 52 handle. So pretty much unched from where it was yesterday and up about a net, about a half a handle or so, not even on the week. So kind of a quiet week out here in crude one of the other big stories, in addition to global demand, has been domestic production when it comes to crude over the past year or so. 
it seems like just an endless story. We just couldn't turn the spigot on fast enough in terms of how much we were producing. Some of that maybe seemed to have dialed back a little bit as well. Uh, U.S. rigs drilling for a new oil dipped from about 873 uh, to 873, I should say, in early 2019. So that likely implies that crude stockpiles down a little bit as well. So all that may be showing that the the endless fire hose of U.S. crude may be lightening as well. So all that leading to a little bit of a lift and a little bit of stability here this week. Vol pretty much coming off uh, pretty aggressively, except for these near-term contracts that are going out in a day or two. Other than that, it's pretty much a Vol coming in pretty steadily. Let's go check on our old friend OIV, which is, of course, the VIX of WTI, an indicator a lot of you like to look. We're back in the 30 handle now, listeners. 39 and a quarter, you know, was up in the 50s for a while there, but most of last year until Q4, really, it was in the 20s. So not quite back where it used to be, but coming off those near-term highs of relate here. Let's see what else was lighting it up out here this week. OI up Pretty much on just about 1%, not a huge bump in OI. Where was the action this week? It was out here in the Feb contract to the tune of 35% of the action all going up in this contract that is pretty much expiring <laughs> in a few minutes here. Uh, what was the big trade? 53 calls actually uh, dominate in the tape here this week. 17,000 of those bad boys lighting it up pretty much every day this week. 4,200 on Monday, 8,500 on Tuesday, and about 5,000 hitting the tape today. Net slightly closing, which is kind of interesting. Again, we don't have today's numbers for sure, uh, but a total, yeah, over 17,000, almost 18,000 hitting the tape out there for our number one trade with a bullet. Let's look really quickly at our old friend, the SKU. Let's go beyond these contracts that are going out in a few minutes because that doesn't really tell you too much. Let's go out a couple of days. Let's go out. Let's try to go out a couple of weeks. There we go. A little bit more. And those, that skew was pretty much exactly unched. Uh, a little bit closer to home. About a nine days or so left in this contract for the Jan week four. And we've got, looks like the puts, uh, the puts getting a little bit more bid. They were 4% rich. The at the money now five, about 5.4%. And the calls getting a little bit more bid as well. They were 3.4% cheap to at the money now about 2.3%. So general lift in the skew as we're seeing the vol come in, which is interesting out there as well. Other big trades, like 60 calls, doing about 8,500 contracts this week out there in March. And let's see, a little bit farther out. Oh, even almost 1,000 of the 32 half puts trading in Dece of 2021, if you are indeed inclined to be bearish out there. All right, let's keep on rolling. Got a little bit more time here on the show to pick some products. Let's spin the old wheel and see where we want to go. Actually, I think we have some listeners who want to know about some products. So maybe we'll do that. We'll let the listeners determine where we go next with a little bit of your futures options feedback. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for Futures Options Feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider Radio Network mobile app, available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live every Friday at 3 p.m. Central via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at Mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com. All right, everybody, let's see what you guys have on the brain. A lot of product requests. Let's see how many we can get to here. El Grande Burro. <laughs> I like that one. El Grande Burro wants to know, how are we looking on beans this week? Are the options setting up for a pop? Well, let's look. Mr. Big Burro, in this case, a donkey. All right, let's see here. The beans coming into showtime here, 892 on the strike, so we're south of the much-watched 900 handle out there. 
They're off about 18 handles net on the week, or about two uh, percent. So not a not a strong week for beans. I think that's weakening Chinese data from Monday. Obviously, spooked a lot of people. People were hoping maybe the the worst was behind us when it came to the trade war and these zero import months for beans. Maybe with that data, not so much. So that's weighing on the beans a bit. Vol up a little bit. Doesn't really surprise me there, seeing this stuff drop. More concerns levying out there being weighed on beans. Vol up a bit. Not huge, but a little pop kind of across the board. Let's look here to the skew, which is kind of the answer to your question, because if your options are setting up for a pop, you're probably going to see that reflected in the skew or the flow. Let's look at what the flow was out here. Open interest up about 5.5%, so a robust week for the beans where was the action the action was in march this week in particular with about 41 and a half percent of all the paper going up here in march the big trade actually was the 880 puts so just off the top of my head looking at the, at the underlying moves and the paper flow i'm gonna say no probably but we can dig in a little bit more to find out for sure 13,500 of these 880 puts in march were leading the dance these are slightly about 10 handle out of the money puts right now uh so yeah the lion's share going up yesterday about 10,000 3,300 going up on monday not so much active today only a couple of hundred on the tape so then that was pretty much opening about five thousand of that net opening so back and forth on that strike but also net opening so new positioning on the puts that's probably going to lead to more of a put bid out here in the skew let's go out to that march skew and see and yes that's pretty much the case puts getting ever so slightly more bid they were about 1.7 percent rich to add the money i'm sorry yeah they were cheap this actually much more bid than i thought they were 1.7 percent at a discount to add the money now they're bid to the at the money so they've actually flipped the script they were they were about two percent cheap now about two percent rich uh, so yeah the puts getting uh, markedly more bid here this week and the calls as you might expect coming in a little bit so the calls were about two percent rich to add the money now about 0.9 percent so coming in pretty much about a point there so all that <laughs> A long way around to saying, Mr. Grande Burro, uh, no, that does, doesn't appear like the options, at least right now, are setting up for a pop N- in the aggregate. Now, of course, individually, people could be loading up on various spreads, and that could certainly be the case. But um, we're talking aggregate flow here. That's pretty much what we can see. And in the aggregate, it does not appear like the SKUs are showing me there's a market bid to the calls and a discount to the puts, and people are really looking for a big, big return past the 900 level with a vengeance out here Uh, let's look out a little bit farther out 1040 calls were trading all the way out in november so the november 1040s traded 2166 times so maybe that perhaps a little bit of a bullish sign also saw 940s trading a little bit closer to home out here these are some of the feb contracts interesting paper out here but i don't see a ton of bids to call skew not really not in the active months anyway not a ton of call up but we'll see it we'll keep an eye on the beans we always do and if there's a big change out here we shall let you know all right who else has a product on the brain uh, step up two says we need a call in number for the show okay we've had some before people seem to be shy about having their voices actually played on the air go figure not everybody talks into a mic for a living so they don't want that but we have a lot of ways you guys can play live if you are so inclined the live chat is the best place to do that grab the mixer link you can chime in live there and no one has to hear your voice you just hear me reading it so you don't have to be embarrassed about having your voice read or played i should say on the air so if you want to get at us live there mr step up to Mixler is the best place to do that. Otherwise, hit us up on all the major platforms, social media, you know, the website, et cetera, and so on and so forth. So you have a lot of ways to hit us up. And if you can even do it during the show, if they're interesting, maybe we can find a way to, to rotate them onto the program. So you have no shortage of ways to reach out to us. Uh, but the, for the live, the best way is the thing. I don't think we're going to do the call-in number unless there's a, a huge demand for it. Old school radio call-in time? Eh, maybe. <laughs> it might be interesting. Uh, let's see. Here's another product request. Brad Elliott. He sent in an article. He says the pork industry sees some recovery uh, from decade-low prices. He wants to know, is it time for more hog love 
on the show. Well, because you asked so nicely there, Brad, let's see if we can accommodate you. Uh, now we're going to switch down, listeners, to go from the grains and oil seeds in the ag section of Quick Strike over there to the livestock. And let's go to the lean hogs, where we shall find the next portion of our program, a little bit of hashtag hog love here to wrap up our our early early week edition of Twifle. Let's see, this article was talking about, so this is from porkbusiness.com, my favorite early morning. You wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, you check porkbusiness.com. And let's see, for 2019, they said total pork supplies are expected to be up around 2%. Uh, except for the summer quarter when they may be up closer to 3%. Just for the year, pork supplies may rise slightly. Uh, that's But that over 2%, that's somewhat lower than previous thoughts and gives them modest optimism to higher price expectations for 2019. So a little bit counterintuitive. The, the supply is going up, you think it come down, but not going up as much as perhaps anticipated. So that is what they mentioned. They also mentioned 2018 it was a bad year for hog prices. Probably not a surprise to a lot of people out there, and they're hopeful for 2019 let's see what's shaping up out here in the old hogs where was the action this week the action out here was in the feb contract about 40 percent of the paper out here with uh, the contract right now right around right around the 60 handle off about four and a half percent uh, or nearly three handles again this week so not a good week here for the old hog love and with uh, the vol kind of a mixed bag a front portion of the curve Going slightly up, whereas the latter portion of the curve, vol, actually coming in. It's a little bit of a bifurcation in the vol term structure out there, which is kind of interesting. Uh, The big paper, like I said, in this contract that's going away in about 30 days, so it's got some time on it here. 63 calls were the big trade out here this week. Let's see when those bad boys are up. Again, the hogs, a little bit of a different beast, not quite the same paper flow. So a big trade. It's going to do 2,800 and 21 contracts. That's their number one contract this week. The lion's share actually coming today. 1250 on the tape today, 1126 on Tuesday, and about almost 500 on the tape on Monday. It looks like back and forth paper. It's only slightly opening. But again, we don't have today's numbers for OI, so we don't know for sure. Uh, followed by the 66 calls, also doing about 2,000 today. So, or excuse me, 2,000. On the week, 583 today. So interesting bit of call action. Let's look at this front contract, see what's going on out here from a SKU perspective. And given all this call action, I'd expect to see a little bit of bid to the calls, and that's pretty much what we saw. Coming into this week, the calls were about 1.1% rich to add the money. Again, 25 delta call, 25 delta put, 50 delta risk reversal. That's how that quick SKU is measured. 3.3% rich to the add the money this week. So a bit of a bid kicking in. Not surprising you see a decent amount of call paper. That call wing, if it's a lot of buying, in particular, going to get a little bit rich. The puts kind of unched from last week. They were almost 1% cheap to add the money. Now they're about half a percent cheap. So coming in a little bit, not a huge change out there in put skew in the hogs. Uh, yeah, an open interest growing about not quite 3%, 2.7% in the hogs. The other big trade, about the big month, I should say, out here were, interestingly enough, the 70 puts in June, which are about 10 handle in the money puts, going up 1,600 times, about almost 700 on Monday, almost 700 today, and about 330 on Tuesday. So it's net opening, about 700. So opening positioning on a fairly in the money put, not something you typically see very often in contracts like this. Again, the hogs, though, have a bit of their own rules of engagement. I'll have to talk to some hog guys to see if uh, in the money put paper, is all the rage out there. This is just a bit of a weird weekly blip. Uh, interesting stuff. Again, the hogs are always fun. A little bit of a different type of product for us here on the show. And judging from your requests, you guys have a lot of love for them as well. Let's wrap it up here with uh, Olive Trader. Olive Trader 2, actually. I'm sorry. He was kind of chiming in. He chimed in last week, I believe. And he's following up on that. We, he asked about the gold whale last week. He says, looks like he wrote a little song. He said, oh, 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 where is the gold options whale? I listened to your show. Don't know where it went. Oh, 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 where did the whale go? There we go. A musical submission from the clearly quite talented Twifo audience. Let's see if we have some music of our own to maybe back that up. There it is, listeners. In case you can't tell, coming into the new year here, trying to deliver for you a nice, a nice tight show around the 45-minute mark. Get you in, get you loaded up with content, get you out on your way. But 
sometimes it's hard because there's so many products and you guys want more all the time. We could easily do a show for many hours here talking all the various products that are lighting it up on the options side. But instead, we'll let you guys lead the dance a lot too. If you have esoteric products you want to see on the show, maybe a question about SKU, a question about a certain item or intro, maybe you just want to know some strategy questions, whatever you got in your brain. Hit us up. We'd love to hear from you on Twipe. We'd love to do those all-question shows. Maybe we'll do some more of those coming up. And certainly if you got gems like your own songs here, <laughs> we'll, be sure. we'll be sure to give them some love on the show, too. Speaking of some love, make sure you give it to all of the firms and the people who support this show because they're the reason we're able to do it for you for free week after week. Head on over to Quick Strike, Quick Strike, Q-U-I-K-S-T-R-I-K-E. Dot net to check out the pro grade, the pro version of the tools there. Kick the tires, light the fires, tell Nick we sent you. They'll be super excited to see you. And they're working on some cool new stuff I know for you guys, so uh, look forward to that soon as well. We just had Sean. Sean taking a break from his crazy travel just to accommodate uh, my own crazy schedule this week, so we appreciate that. Of course, check them out. FTCRussell.com is a place for a lot of this data. You want to learn about put rights? How effective they might be or maybe not be, depending on certain market environments, that's the place to go. Uh, we see a lot of that data coming out of Wisdom Tree, but there's other areas to find that as well. Lots of data on different use cases, strategies, how you can use those options in your portfolio. FTCRussell.com, the place to go. Of course, at FTC Russell on Twitter. Give them a follow. Some of that data coming out there as well. And last but not least, of course, our friends over there at CME Group, the home of all these products. We're talking about all the time. and quite literally probably couldn't do the show without them because that's where it all trades. Check them out, cmegroup.com to learn more. While you're there, of course, head on over to slash twifo. You can see all the reports we do here. It gives you access to kind of a nice free version of Quick Strike. Then you want to upgrade to the Pro Tools. You know where to go. And on behalf of Sean, who took a nice chunk out of his schedule today, as well as Mr. Nick, who's out there gallivanting, and our friends over there at CME, and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you for downloading, streaming, subscribing, for sending in all of your, your various product requests and your songs. And we love it all. Keep it coming. And we'll see you next time at our regular time for more of This Week in Futures Options. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike, options pricing and analysis software. QuickStrike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy-to-use web-based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page-level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. QuickStrike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at Bantix.com. That's B A N T I X.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Quick Strike One. That's Q U I K S T R I K E One. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by FTSE Russell, a leading global provider of benchmarks, analytics, and data solutions. Investors in the U.S. and around the world are using FTSE Russell indexes to benchmark their investment performance and create investment funds, ETFs, structured products, and index-based derivatives. Many Options Insider Radio Network listeners will be familiar with the Russell 2000 Index. Russell 2000 Futures and Options are currently trading on the Chicago Board Options Exchange and CME Group. For more information, please visit FTSERussell.com, CBOE.com, and CMEGroup.com. This broadcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only and does not constitute trading advice or the solicitation of purchases or sale of any futures or options. The rulebook of the applicable exchange should be consulted as the authoritative source on all current contract specifications. 
You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. Insider.com.